okay, in uh, Aston, Birmingham, they bought a church and they turned it into a mosque. And there's okay. one which been bears in East London, they bought a church and turned it into a mosque. You know, yeah. I mean, what you like about the European governments, they care only about money. Yeah. They don't, yeah. as long as you have the money, they tell you to, because yeah, in Muslim countries, if, if a place is a mosque, you know, Allah would turn it to anything else. He has to stay, stay yeah. mosque all the time, you understand? Yeah, because it works, you know, subhanAllah. So you see the name of Islam, and you see how Islam impacts people in reality. Because Christianity is a theory belief, meaning that it's not in reality. It's not something that you can implement. It's be in the church, God love you, khalas. But Islam, no. It's for the layman and for the government too. Yeah, you know, I want to say something. Even when I've seen all your dawah videos, especially like the standing in the corner, every time you ask like a atheist or a Christian, does it make sense? Is it logical? Yeah. Every time they said yes. I've never seen anyone say no. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Especially, that's the lie, that's the lie. Even if they don't accept, even if they don't accept Islam at that time, straight away, but they always say it makes sense, it's clear, it's rational, logical. Because why? I mentioned that. Why Islam is the only religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because when you look at Islamic teaching, and you look to our nature, when someone explains Islam to you, naturally you start gravitating towards Islam. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Because the one who created you with those tools within you, is the same one who sent down the revelation. Yeah, That's yeah. why they click in. But only Christianity got against our sound reasoning. Yeah. Judaism is a tribal God. You know, it's just God that care about all, only group of people, the rest. Uh, you understand, Akhi? Yeah. That's why, even though there's a huge war against Islam, and as I've mentioned many times, if this war that has been waged by the media in the Western world and everywhere else, uh, it was against any religion, that religion would be dead long time ago. But right. guess what? Look, this is dirty and disgusting and a huge war against Islam. Yet Islam is not just uh, defending, it's spreading. SubhanAllah, because why? It's not because we Muslims doing the job, because Allah is doing the job. Allahu Akbar, you know, Allah mentioned that in the Quran. Yeah. You know, Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda. ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا. It's Allah who send His prophets with a true religion, and Allah will make Islam prevail. سبحان الله. And that doesn't mean that some Muslims don't believe. There's no Muslims who left Islam. I'm not saying that. But overall, Islam is spreading through works of Islam. الحمد لله. You know, even though as I've mentioned, there is many many barriers against Islam. You know, they say Islam oppressed women. Okay. Islam oppressed this. That's what they say, innit? Yeah. But a lot, majority of reverts are women. Yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Even Allah says, Allah may yasha. Yeah, but you know, but you know now, yeah, I want to, I want to mention something. I think Europeans they cannot speak about Islam oppressed women. You know why? Because now Europe in the Western world, they don't know what woman is. They don't know. Literally, okay. men can be women. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know, they don't know. So, so when they say Islam oppressed women, what do you mean by that? Define women. They cannot define women. Have you seen that program with this American guy? He was going around there, he was asking, define women. A woman, she said, I cannot define women. So the Western world, they cannot tell us if we are oppressing women or not. Yeah. And you gave a good example about, if you feel like you don't have an arm, you're not going to cut the arm off. Yeah, because you feel, subhanAllah, there is a man that raped two women. Raped two women, yeah? What happened? The day that he was going to the court to get a sentence, he dressed like a woman and he said, I, I identify myself as a woman. Now, where they have to put him? Woman prison. Woman prison. Yeah, they have to put him because he's a woman, he said. Now that place is like paradise for him. That's what he wants. But Allah mentioned that in the Quran. Woman a'rada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan danka. Whoever turns away from a remembrance, then he will have a miserable life. And that's what we're seeing now, you know? It's crazy, bro. That's a similar thing. Similar, desires, like. desires. You take it, take no. your desires as God. Yeah. When you take your desires as God, then you start, today is halal, tomorrow you change your mind. Yeah. Tomorrow is halal. Like, you know, now, like I said, they cannot tell us what is a woman or what is a man. You understand? Look, this guy. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Huh? I'm sweet enough, you know? Barakallah, man. You know, the way you break, break it down, you give that, the way you break it down, like you give examples about, for example, the two million pounds, and you give the prophecies, Allah, 
الحمد لله ايزي واي تو دايجست الحمد لله يو نو ذا بليس اوف القران السنه اخي نو فلسفي نو لونج ويندد ديسكشنز قران سنه سيمبل واي والحمد لله ذا بركه بيكاز اي واز اي واز جوين انتو ذا روت اوف ذا كلام كوزمولوجيكال ذس جيتس كونفيوزن اند يو كان نيجيت يا 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 كاي يو سيد يا The way you break it down is easier to digest. It's all of this word arguments, word play, and it's just too much. And why they why they are using this uh, scientific way to prove Allah's existence or cosmological way? Yeah. Because some Muslims they have inferiority complex yeah. towards the Western world, so they have to treat, they have to uh, 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 debate them according to their yeah, so, yeah. uh, style and according to their standard. However, they say because they are different than us. But Sahaba when they went to Persia and Roma, Byzantine. They were different than the, the Arab Muslims. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Byzantine philosophy was there. Persian, they were philosophers. Uh, uh, many philosophers. Likewise, Sahaba never said, you know what? Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Ali, Talha. Now we're reaching Persia. Or we're reaching Byzantine. Remember, the people are different. Yeah, Let yeah. us utilize their way. No, they were proud of the Quran and the Sunnah. I remember you said something as well. Like, their, them accepting Islam is not your criteria. This, uh, the Quran and Sunnah is a criteria. Now, people, uh, Now, Allah changed the hearts. Where is open us to convey the message? Like I mentioned, Akhi, there is some guys here. They be speaking to some Muslim brothers, speaking yeah. speaking to some atheists here for hours, <laughs> hours, Akhi, long-winded discussion, and they have not accept Islam. Do you know why? Because those atheists, they're not seeking the truth. You know, they're not seeking the truth, and they know Islam is the truth. So what you do, you have to remind them with Allah's verse about yeah, the hellfire yeah, and the punishment. That's the Quranic style, you know, Allah, you with said, Jannah. Oh, sorry, Allah. You, said, you said as well, I remember you talked about one, one conversation you had with an atheist. And he must, have said, he must have said to him, are you sure you're here? He's like, I'm not sure. You're 100% sure. He said, I'm 99%. I might be asleep. And you said that every week they'll come with a new argument. Of course. To, to go now, research. Come now on. this person cannot become Muslim. Because what? if he becomes a Muslim and he still has this belief, there's always doubt. Yeah. Muslims have to have certainty. Al-Yaqeen, right? So this guy is going to doubt, said maybe Islam is true, but there is some one, one point percent Islam is not true. You care for Billah, because Islam is the truth with billion certainty. No doubt about it. You understand? So if a person says that, well, I'm going to spend my, waste my time with him, telling yeah, him, yeah, uh, if stop on, like one of them, I said to him, are you, are you in front of me? He said, are you asking me if, if stop logically? Yeah, that guy, that guy. <laughs> I'm asking you a question, forget it. Oh, Epistemologically, <laughs> anthropologically, psychologically, cosmologically. And you know the term they use? Big terms. And if you yeah, ask, they sound smart. But if you investigate the Makhid, they're dumb. No smartness. The smartness, that's what Allah in the Quran mentioned. وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ They said, if we use our intellect and our hearing, then we wouldn't have been from the people of the fire. What does that mean? They, they didn't have intellect. No, they had intellect, but they never allowed their intellect to function according to the way Allah created it. They were poisoned with skepticism, philosophy, nonsensical things. You see, so they went against their uh, nature just for the sake of rejecting Allah. I'll give you an example. Let's listen to this, yeah? I was speaking to a sister, she said to me, she had some doubt, yeah? yeah? So she said to me, I said, look, you have to worship Allah, I mention Allah's blessings. She said to me, but Allah, I never, uh, Allah never asked me before he created me. Allah never asked me before he created me, yeah? So I'm thinking, look, this, she's miskeen, yeah? But this question doesn't make any sense, why? Because if Allah, watch this, she wants to, yes, what are you saying, good. She wants Allah according to her desires, yeah, firstly. Yeah. Secondly, if, Allah's, if Allah has to ask you, then what he has to do? He has to create you. But if Allah creates you, then you have to understand he's your Lord and you are servants. You have to submit to him. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Make what is this called? A self sabatu Sophistry. Sophistry, they will, they will ask question. The first part of the question refute the last part. Or the last part refute the first part. And this group called existed before Plato and Aristotle. They existed to create what they were doing in debate and discussions. They used to create questions for the sake of confusing people. And some people, what they do, they entertain the question. Then what happened? It just cause, cause more confusion. You bring in an answer to something that does not need the answer. What it means rebuking and showing the nonsensical question. 
You understand? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why Allah created me, he never asked me. But if he asks you and you know he's your Lord, the Almighty, the powerful, the creator, the one that owns everything, and you are his servant, how is he going to ask you? Doesn't make any sense. That's like, I'm 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 no. Subhanallah, doesn't make any sense. It's like you're going to work, and you know, when you're going to work, and you know this is the boss, and you have to follow the boss, and he say, you know what? Why you don't tell me what I, how you, I should tell you what to do? Yeah. You're going to say, no, no, there's misunderstanding here. I'm the boss. You understand? That's why when you go, they bring these questions, but when they go to work, they have no problem. They manage just to control them what time they go to the bathrooms. They have no problem with that. Literally, if you work from nine to five, you can't go to the bathroom every yeah. second. The, the boss will say to you, listen, your break is midday. And he says, thank you, sir. But I guess Allah, they will bring any nonsensical yeah. disease, uh, evil question. Why? Because your heart and your soul is poisoned. That's what Allah said. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا The one that, because we have a nafs, and our nafs is like a baby, just wants more and more, and wants to, to justify the haram. So we have to cultivate it and control it. You understand? So Allah put a nafs in us to test us. Either it's going to overpower us, or we have to overpower it. How we overpower it? By the Quran and the Sunnah. You understand? Not by philosophy. Philosophy, just increase you more in darkness and disease and uh, marad and marad. Yes. You know, that the Muslims that utilize philosophy, they don't use it to establish aqidah in of itself. However, they use it as a defense mechanism to counter argue the arguments that these philosophers bring. So We are not in need of that because that brings more confusion. But like, so... So how do you, but the thing is, if you ask, if a philosopher gives you principles of logic yeah. and he presents that to you, like you can't just say to them because Allah said it. Obviously, they don't accept the premise of Allah to begin with. No, no, wait, wait. Firstly, I'm not saying you have to say Allah said it straight away, but I got the argument from the Quran. And I'm not saying don't use sound reasoning. The philosophy of reasoning is not sound reasoning. Okay, so, so what you so, just did, wait, wait, wait. so what you did when a philosopher came to you, you are already submitting to his way. So, okay, so let's not say philosophy, but ilm al kalam. So, same thing, ilm al kalam is same thing. But it's, but it's not used to establish it, meaning we don't, we don't play with them. We go from our grounds. No, that's what they said before, Akhi. Before, that's, I, agree, I understand what you're saying, yeah? You're saying that we use philosophy or kalam, which is a part of philosophy, we use it to refute them, not to establish our religion, yeah? I counter them, yeah? yeah I counter, yeah? Okay. The Sahaba, when they went to Persia and Rome, were the philosophers there? I'm not too sure. Of course, okay. it, was a, it was philosophy, yeah. Persia first. Yeah. yeah, first and Rome, okay. Did the Sahaba did this way? No, okay. Sahaba, the Quran, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam gave da'wah to people in Medina. He gave da'wah to Jewish people. And remember, Jewish people, they were heavily influenced by philosophy too. Did Prophet Muhammad Wasallam start telling them Al-Jawhar, Wal-A'rad, wal ajsam and all of this, or there is a, there's attributes, or there is parts, and the, no, Allah, Allah said, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, or if someone, in he said, some people, what they do, because they've already been praising the Quran, they hate Quran, so what you do, you get the argument from the Quran, you know, from the Quran, and you say, look, either you create yourself, or you create by nothing. Perfect, you understand? But, in the time but philosophers, what they say, they find nothing. Yeah. What are you doing? Muslims, who love this the, the, the way of talking, he starts going to nothing, then he forgets the main points. Yeah. But do you see at the time of Nabi Sallam, that was at the time, it's at the time of the Salaf, you see, Nabi Sallam was a link between the heavens and the earth. And at the time of the Salaf, meaning that Iman was unshakable, right? Unbreakable. But so our Imam Sheikh Abu was? No, meaning that now these arguments started to present themselves as the more of the Khalif, right? When why? Why? Let us step by step. Why the Khalif used Kalam? Let us go to Tariqh. For you to understand my brother, what's your name? Afwan. Safe. Safe. Mashallah. Beautiful name. Sham Siddin. Malah bless you. Safe. Go on. So what is, where is your country from? Malaysia originally. Malaysia, Mashallah. So let us understand why the Muslims start using Al Kalam. Do you know the history? As far as I know, they utilize the Ilmul Kalam to defend the religion. Who started first? The, the main figures, as far as we know, is 
Did you know that in that no, it's not. It's not. He didn't start it, but obviously the main figures. No, Jabno Safwan. Jabno Safwan, he was in Samarkand. Okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah. He met people called Sumania. Sumania, people that did not believe in Allah. Okay? And they asked him, Have you seen your God? Question, they start bringing doubts. Okay? Jabno Safwan was influenced by Greek philosophy and the Sumerian, not Sumerian, and. Um, Oh, subhanAllah. Is, is, is Sumerian, uh, what do they call the man? Savi'a, Savi'a, okay? Sibians, yeah? When he started using philosophy, okay? The Salaf, did they support him or rebuked him? Rebuked him. Rebuked him. So now, we should, Prophet Muhammad said to follow Salaf, so if there was khair in Ilm al Kalam. So what happened with Ilm al Kalam? When he started using Ilm al Kalam, he led him to negate Allah's attributes. Philosophy is a disease. That's what the argument was. Our argument, we cannot use the Quran and Sunnah and guess them because they don't believe in Quran and Sunnah. Okay? So what we have to use? Day ways. But day ways corrupted. And it's not upon you because I understand you can show them, like Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, uh, study philosophy, not to use it to. to no, not to, no, no, just to refute to defend Islam. No, to show contradiction in that philosophy that we are not in need of it. That's what's aim. That's why it's always Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. You understand? Yeah. So, philosophy that was, Al Mul Kalam was used, Imam Ahmad rebuked it. Shafi'i was speaking to one of his students. And he started using Imam Al Kalam. He said, Leave that. It's a disease. Imam Ahmad, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. When Imam Ahmad, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, was asked, Why Imam Al Kalam is dangerous? Because Akhir Karim, Sayyid, Mala, bless you. Philosophy has a lot of ambiguity. You understand? For example, they say Allah is spaceless. Have you heard that? Spaceless. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about this statement? It depends what the intended meaning behind it is. Barakallah. Correct. Yeah. Because spaceless, what do you mean by that? When the full the Alim uh uh and they used it to negate Allah is above the creation. You understand? So when we say spaceless, what do you mean by that? You understand? Because we say Allah is above the creation. You want to call it a space or not, it's up to you. But if you say space that is created and Allah is surrounded by his creation, we reject that. And if you say means that Allah is above the arsh, above his creation, we accept that. And that's what the Quran and the Sunnah teaches. They say Allah is timeless. Timeless, yeah? Again, this term, timeless, is not in the Quran. Why this, this term was used? To negate Allah eternally is the creator, eternally is the most merciful. To negate Allah's actions. But is that, I don't think that's the way they intend it. When they say time, that's what, meaning they mean time as in the creation of Allah. No, that's what they intend. That's why they negate Allah eternally. Ashaya al that's what they say. They don't, they don't affirm that Allah eternally the creator and everything. So are they using yeah. language to frame the conversation? They're using the terms that is a disease, it's a poison. You know, that's why we're not in need of that. Defend Islam with the Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. And Naam, you can give analogies. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad did that. Mm -hmm. Imam Abu Hanifa, when he went to debate atheists, and he said to them, if I tell you there is a boat, and a boat has is been loaded with many items, mm -hmm. and it was sweeping or, um, what do they call it, on the seas, going slowly and smoothly until it reaches the shore. And he said, that's crazy without, uh, no one said, he said, what about this creation, the upper? Why is showing them, is, 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 why is showing them? This creation must have, there's knowledge behind it. And there's order behind it. You know, like what, so we see the Salaf use uh, uh, sound reason analogies. Like Prophet Muhammad, when a man came to him, he said, oh, messenger of Allah, I'm a white person, my wife, she's white. And we have a black child. Prophet said, do you have a camel? He said, yes. He said, do you have a red camel? He said, yes. He said, how? He comes from, he said, from white camels. He said, because of what? Because of the lineage. Like one of the offspring was red. He said, likewise. So he used what? Analogy, no problem. But when you come to philosophy that we use and Imam Al-Kalam, which clearly opposed the Quran and the Sunnah. That's why they start saying Mujassima. They start saying Allah has, negates Allah has a body. And he said, if Allah moves, because it's based upon the 10 categories of Aristotle. That God is, it must be moveless, uh, uh, motionless. Timeless, spaceless, you know, all of these terms were not in need of it.
Because if you accept their term already, it's dangerous. Be with the Quran and Sunnah. If you're going to study it, and you already studied the Quran and Sunnah and understood the Aqidah Salafiya correctly with clear proofs, and you want to study philosophy to refute it and expose their way, Alhamdulillah. That's what the Salaf did. Yeah, I'm for it. What is explain that to me? The science is the pattern of regularity found in nature. You know what I mean? It's not tested repeated, repeated again. But that's a that's a type of philosophy. So why is the free? The Western uh, the Western science is based upon a Greek philosophy. I know Greek philosophy is out of that. No, no, but it's based upon that science. So it's, but science was started by um, a Muslim man. No, 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 no. It's not like the, science. The, the no. science. Um, the, it's okay, the method. The method, yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about the method, actually. Okay, yeah. Don't mix between the method and the science itself. You understand? I'm talking about science as a whole. The science is based, I'm talking about the Western, especially the Western science. The Western science now is based upon the Greek philosophy. You know? It's based upon the Greek philosophy, no doubt. And I would advise people, brothers, to read the works of Sheikh Abu Iyad, Amr al Likewise, there is, uh, mashallah, one of the doctors and from Egypt called Abu Fida from Sabin Mas'ud. Mashallah has articles in English and Arabic. And I will, I will give you his name and check it for both of them. Check. They, they have two lectures about philosophy and the danger of Ilm al-Kalam and how Ilm al-Kalam. Ilm al-Kalam is a poison, akhi. Look, akhi. It's upon you to guide the people. Yes? For example, I'll give you an example. Imagine there is, you know, the concept of evil. Some Muslims have written a book to refute it, yeah? That doesn't make any sense to me. You know why? Why? Okay. I can refute it easily without writing a book. You know why they had to write a book? Because, you know why? To refute the concept of evil. If there's evil. Do you know why? Because some Muslims abide by the way of the Western philosophers. Not an order, because you know there's Daruriyat in Islam. Daruriyat. Daruriyat is known by necessity. Does the, does the philosophers accept that? They don't accept that. They, they have, you have to prove everything. Yes? You have to prove everything. And now, when we know that Daruriyat, that Allah is the creator of everything, whatever occurs, there's a wisdom behind it. Simple. Okay? You can give examples. I'm not saying to give examples, but it's known. So when you start debating in depth about it, you bring more confusion than clarity. Because why? They said the hardest thing to prove is the most obvious thing. You understand, Akhi? Yeah, you agree with me, Safe? I, I agree with you, but yeah. still didn't. Sorry, we're going to start. See, like, philosophy back then and now is the same. The same. That's what you think. That's what I thought, too. I don't, I don't agree with like Greek philosophy, Aristotle said the only philosophy, Egyptian philosophy, Western philosophy, yeah. But that's a good point as well though, when he says that philosophy changes through times and places, so when you get the statements of the Salaf who rebukes philosophy, do you not think that the philosophy they were referring to was that philosophy used by Jahan bin Safan? No, 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 no. It's the same because why? Philosophy what is in our time, like I said. Philosophers in our time, not Jahan bin Safan's time, in our time. Mm -hmm. If you tell them they are Sabi Kul Fitra, Sabi Do they accept it? No, they say you have to prove it. What's his name? You remember the uh, British uh, philosopher who wrote a book about how to prove Daruriyat? Daruriyat is no, there's no, there's no need proof. That's contradiction. Because Daruriyat is self evident. Yeah. It's like you proving to me, I'm speaking to you. That doesn't make any sense. So, from that, that's what I'm saying. There is certain things. That's why Islam comes with addressing Daruriyat. Yeah. So, any human being who is sincere, mm -hmm. doesn't have an evil heart, yeah. will accept it. Mm -hmm. But someone who is poisoned, has an evil heart, will never be satisfied with anything. That like even, yeah. even if you bring, even if you use philosophy to refute doubt mm -hmm. about uh, evil, they have another question. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. They will have even, like for example, uh, 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 sorry, because I'm speaking more, forgive me, but I can't yeah. You know, um, there's a brother from America, he tried to refute the doubt and never asked God to create me. Why he created me, yeah? I never asked. The way you refute it, alhamdulillah, is simple. You don't even entertain it because it doesn't make any sense. One brother said, you know what he said? He said, I, I, I will say to this guy, 
Imagine you wake up and you see food in front of you. Yeah? Food in front of you. And you eat it. Would you not thank me? You would thank me, he said, yeah? Yeah, but someone who has evil heart, like philosophers, generally speak what he says. He said, yeah, but if I don't eat it and I eat it, I don't say thank you. Would you punish me? Why are you going to punish me? Who bring doubt? See? But a Salafi comes in. Your question doesn't make any sense. Because if you need Allah to ask you, then he has to create you. If Allah creates you, you already submit that he's the creator and you are the created. He is the Lord of everything, then you should submit to him. You don't question him. Simple. Allah Akbar, Salafi way. So you are you do, you refuse the question, you don't even entertain it. Alhamdulillah. I don't leave you, it's not politics. No, I mean like, look, they're scared. Oh yeah. Do you know why, do you know why? Do you know the people, sorry, do you know why people don't know, you know, everyone? Do you not think there's a middle ground though? Where, because I know people who are sincere and genuinely ask philosophical questions who come from a sincere, they're asking from a point of sincerity. But there's no what way. What is a philosophical question, for example? Give me an example of that. Because I'm not saying if someone's sincere, mm -hmm. like, uh, understand me correctly. Alhamdulillah. I mean, I've been here 15 years. I give yeah. da'wah. Mm -hmm. Anyone, even they come with the most ridiculous question, I say answer it. Yeah. And if I see they're sincere, I carry on. If I'm not sincere, I will rebuke them with the Quran. Brother, sorry to cut you. Let's go back to something I want to mention. You said about the Kuffar do not believe Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So there's no point saying Allah said, yeah? Yeah. That's not correct. That's, that's incorrect what you said. You know why? No, I mean, I said that they don't believe in the premise of Allah. So to say Allah said Lord to them. Believe. Yeah, but you don't have to say Allah said. I understand that Uthman mm -hmm. said that. But even you say Allah said because you want to accept it or not, you don't want to accept it. Because when Allah said something, it's not just when Allah said something, it's something which any human being with a sound reasoning and a sound natural inclination will gravitate towards it. Maybe he has some doubt, you can refute it. Let me bring you back, show you the danger of your statement. The Kuffar of Quraysh, they never believed in their judgment. Sahih? Wama yuhlikuna illa dahab. There's nothing will parish make us parish except the time. Mm -hmm. So why Allah is threatening them with day of judgment when they don't even believe in the day of judgment? You tell me. You see, Akhi? Because deep down they do believe. Mm -hmm. But they're too arrogant to submit to, submit to that. Mm -hmm. So let us use the Quranic way. The Quranic way, you know, Quran is powerful. That's what Quran from Allah. Quran has intellectual arguments. Mm -hmm and psychological arguments. Some people, regardless how much intellectual argument, they're too arrogant to accept that. So what you do, you change it up, fear Allah. And you're gonna stand before Allah. Regardless how many times you're gonna try to use a nonsensical argument against your creator, you will die. And there's a punishment for you. You know, you can't, uh, sorry, and you don't have to say it loudly, say you're gonna die and stand before your God, the one that created you. If you accept it, leave him with this. You understand? So that's, that's that, if you say, so what, there's many verses where Prophet them with the day of judgment, threaten them with the punishment, with the hellfire, because they, they believe in it. But because the, the, why people don't accept, why people don't follow Islam? Either there's a psychological reason or a social reason. Either a psychological factor or a social factor. What do I mean by psychological factor? Psychological factor, the person is arrogant, he knows the truth. Or he knows that Islam teaches something which is forbidden that he desires and he likes mm -hmm. but he's not gonna tell you some people they will say it openly i like this and that's why i don't become muslim but majority of times he's gonna try to justify his disbelief and not accept islam by quote unquote philosophical arguments yeah. and intellectual arguments or a social factor like i believe bob and other than them they believe islam is the truth mm -hmm. but because people look up to them amongst their community mm -hmm. so what they do they start looking for any argument against Islam mm -hmm. to justify their disbelief. Or they know if by accepting Islam, their own family will go against them. You understand? So that's what it boils down to. Not it boils down Islam is not clear to them or the, the message in the Quran. No, it's clear to any human being. Wallah, I've been doing that for the last 15 years. Any human being as, who is sound reason, non-Muslim, atheist, agnostic. I spoke to a woman from LGBTQ community. She was a lesbian. Yeah. Okay. The first time I spoke to her, I broke down Islam to her, she said, you know, it makes sense to me. I said, become Muslim. She said, I'm, I, I have something to tell you. So, oh, come on, what's going to tell me, you know? She said, I'm a lesbian. I said, okay, as a lesbian, okay, as haram in Islam, it's a major sin, it's dangerous, no doubt about that. I broke it down for her, why is haram in Islam? She said, you know what, I want to become Muslim. Yeah. 
والله واي يوز شيز ايثيست اخي اي يوز القران اتو ذا الله سيد يو نو بس ان بيبو شو بعثه من سيد اف دي هاف سافي انجس قران في الله سيد الشعب ده وشيت وي جاست جات ذا ارجيمنت يا اخي القران از سفيشن سفيشن اخي فور ايفري تايم ان ايفري بليس Have you found more in your 15 years of discussions? Have you found more people come with emotional argument rather than an intellectual one? No, no. People come. There is no one can can no one can uh, reject Islam because of intellectual arguments. Yeah. Emotional. Yeah, so like never. Like something happened when there was a little kid with their father, something like that. I don't yeah, know, like, yeah. yeah. Like my father. Like a, a person said, I don't want to become Muslim because when I was young, my father did something to me. She was a girl. I said, look. Uh, Your father, what he did is evil, no doubt. But that's not justification for you to not accept God. You understand? That's called emotional arguments. And Allah tests us all our time. Because, you know, uh, uh, even the Quran mentions that Allah will test us. حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ And see the prophets and the people that believed in him, with him, they say, when Allah's victory will happen, They will be shaken by the, 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 the tests and the trials and tribulations. There's a wisdom behind it. But you know what we have to teach our brothers and sisters? Al-Ubudiyah. Save the truth. They understand you nothing. Allah destroyed nations before us. Allah destroyed Fir'aun wa Haman wa Qarun. So we need Al-Ubudiyah. As Hamad al-Ansari, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, he said, we live in a time when the people become rebellious and against God. And uh, these people, the all, you can remind them, but also remind them with a threat and with al-wa'd, Jannah. Alhamdulillah, wallah, khair, khair. And akhi, compare, may Allah bless you, safe. Compare with the people that use philosophy. And the people who use the Quran and the Sunnah, how many people accept Islam by way of people for Quran and Sunnah? Not because of me or because those brothers who use Quran and Sunnah, it's because of the blessing of the Quran and Sunnah. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, so, using philosophy along with the discussions. Some people would argue that. Intellectual proof is a part of philosophy. Like, you give an example how, like, to prove. Our, so, for example, you get ayah of Quran. Yeah. You explain the ayah like with an example. Some people might say that that is that philosophy is a logical proof. Yeah, you see now. I understand that. Yeah, but that is not. It's not because why? Firstly, philosophical argument, philosophy. We know what is it. Like I said, philosophy is based upon what? Skepticism, doubting, daruriyat. You have to prove everything. Yes. So according to philosophy, you show in a verse in the Quran, you have to prove that first. But the Quran, logic, for example of that, fitrah. They say to you have to prove to me there's a fitrah. But fitrah is self-evident. How do you prove to you there's a fitrah? If I prove to you there's a fitrah, then the fitrah needs to prove. That's why um, Aristotle had that. What's the truth? What did he have? I don't agree with this guy, but what do you have? He had the law of non-contradiction or something. Yeah, that that even, the line with the picture, no, no, he had 10 categories, okay? The 10 categories, which is about God. Okay, the love no contradiction, Arasul never had it. Everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A child knows that. Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, example of that, Ibn Taymiyyah. But that's he mentioned. Fitra, though, innate, no, but, but the philosophers, they tell you, no, that is, that is not a fitra. It's just, they will explain to you, understand? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't entertain them, akhi. Yeah. Because everything, they can be done about everything, akhi. Yeah. So, so what's the actual, what's the actual fine line between like a logical proof and then philosophical? A philosophical argument, you have to prove it. You have to prove what is not by necessity. Okay. A logical argument, you don't need to prove the logical argument. It's proved by itself, okay. and that's what is used in the Quran. So, like I'm even, so like even I'm holy in the verse. Yeah. I'm holy in Gairish Amul Khaliqun. Were they created by nothing, or did they create themselves? Allah is not showing us. He, Allah is not, is not just saying us. He had the mention. This is not a. Uh, Like is a uh, Allah is asking? No, this is a rebuking question. Rhetorical. Like a rhetorical question. Are you sure? Are you are you okay that <laughs> that this universe created by nothing? You understand? Of course, Allah. But I'm just saying, like in our own yeah, world, in yes, yeah, no, you understand, Akhi. There's no need. This proof is not needed. You understand? That's why you know when the when the fitras because the messengers uh, address the fitra. Afillahi shak man huwa Allah fatir al samawat al Are you doubting Allah? Now, in the Western world, and many Muslims, they doubt Allah the most obvious thing. And you know, we try to, we try to prove the most obvious thing. You go for long, that's why we say oh, some our brothers. Huh? You go forever, man. Because why? Every proof needs proof. Yeah. Every proof needs proof. Every proof. But Islam comes in with the starting points. The philosophers, they leave off starting points 
to go to look for the starting point that they left. This is the point. They, they, they leave the Daruriyat and then they start looking to prove Daruriyat which they already left it. Shamsi, even um, you know with the Fitra, I've seen, you're right, because I've seen philosophers say that the Fitra is a it's parallel to the child parent complex. Yeah. In my opinion, I think yeah. it's, they just bring too much trouble hat to the. Well, like, I can't even explain it. They do, they bring a lot of, bring a yeah. lot of doubt, but I'll just. just doubt. I, yeah. I never really entertained it, obviously. I'll That's watch, good. I watch, like, I'm a very, like, a logical person, so I don't yeah. just, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I check things through. Even when I read the Quran, I see the yeah. proofs there, like, even Surah Al Qasas, like, you know what I mean? Surah Al Qasas, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real yeah. for Surah Al Qasas. You know when Allah. Yeah. 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 The first one, like, you know, the eight is full of They don't believe, yeah? It's just like, oh, yeah. at the end, no, like, when he make accident, he's he gonna die, like, when there's in the fire and there's nobody to help him, yeah? He will ask God, yeah? That's true, that's true. Because the inside of him, there's Barak a God, and he know about it. Barak Barak you know what the ulama mentioned? You know there's a fitra? If someone, if an atheist has a fitra, by trying to negate him. How? The atheist says, you know, the question, the question atheist, prove Allah's existence. And the proof, that fitra. They say, if there is God, why there is, e uh, no, no, why, why there is evil? Who said evil is not good? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Yeah. Understand? Subject. Something will end them. No, something will end them. Tell them evil is not good. So who created you with that? Yeah. You, that you've been programmed evil is not yeah. good. But you just misunderstand that Allah allowing evil because there's a test. That's why some right. order for, there's many wisdom behind it. Yeah. yeah. Some atheists, they say, oh, there's no good and evil. They, they try and reject all of it. Yeah, they I know, know, man. As soon as they accept the good and evil, yeah. they have, there has to be a God. You know, Shamji, even last week, not last week, but I saw a video where you had a discussion with a guy and he was brought to you the problem of evil. You brought to him the arguments about the, the attributes of Allah, the wisdom, life yeah. is a test, yeah. afterlife and the free will. And then next week he came to take a shahada. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, he's from, from America. The American brother. Yeah, yeah. he was sincere, my life keeping firm, you know. Have you lost in the video when the guy told me? Yeah. He said, I think it's a dream. Yeah, yeah, I put it on my Insta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's funny, I, I said to him, you can have your phone, please. I said, I said it's a dream, bye-bye. Yeah. You know, there's another one. I spoke to him for long, yeah? yeah, yeah. I said, he said, there's nothing certain. So I, I still had his phone. I gave it to him at the end. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, you, you never gave me the phone anyway. It's no certain. He, he woke up. You see how he woke up? Yeah. Why? Because you put him in the real test. Yeah. That's why, my brothers, many people come to Speaker's Corner, debate against Islam. Wallahi, the, the argument that they use, they will never live by it when they go outside the park. Yeah. Wallahi, they never. Argue, argue. That's it, you know? But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا يُجَادِلُ فِي آيَاتِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who debate against Allah's verse, except disbelievers. Disbelievers, they're arrogant. Yeah. Allah's verse are clear. Shamsi, yeah. why, why do you think, you see, with skepticism here, yeah. In their life, their daily life, they're, they're already skeptical like about the doctor, about their family. But when it comes to God, they flip the logic. Yeah. And they try. I mean, there's two types of skepticism. There's one which is praiseworthy, you know that. Yeah. But the blameworthy, like you start doubting everything. Yeah. yeah. So you start doubting even your own selves. Mm -hmm. Like one of them was speaking to him, yeah? And he's like, Prophet Muhammad, what he did, uh, he, uh, 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 he was wrong, he was this. I said, hang, hang on. You told me there's no certainty. So you, there is possibility what Prophet Muhammad did was right. He said yes. I said you're confused then. Go back. But, so, uh, but a form of skepticism. Yeah, you can. A form of yeah. skepticism we found we find in the Quran as well when Ibrahim alayhi salam, obviously when he's a young, and he sees his parents, uh, his father worshiping the idols, and then he looks to the stars, and then he looks to the moon, and he looks to the sun, and so on. No, so that's forth. not. The Salaf never explained that. I know, but that obviously is that not a form of skepticism? No, that he was showing his people. He was asking, like for example, I say, like imagine you bring me a book. I said, this is my God. Yeah, this is not, it's not, he's not telling them, he's doubting it, Ibrahim. I said, no, he's showing them the, the foolishness of believing this is God. You understand? That's not, that's why the ulama mentioned the correct, strongest that Ibrahim said, was not doubting. How Ibrahim is going to doubt about the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he has a fitrah? He's already, he already destroyed the idols. How is he going to doubt? But he, because remember, there's two types of shirk. Shirk occurred amongst nations in two ways. One in galaxies, the universe. The other ones in righteous and idols. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, his people, they were having the, uh, uh, shirk in galaxies. It's to believe galaxies and the, the sun and the moon, they somehow have effects on the universe and control. So he was showing them like he did with the idols. You understand? He said, uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, Mm -hmm. He's not telling them the Kabir did it. 
Yeah. He's just showing them that, do you understand? So he, he was not skeptic about but, it. But in, the, in the same way, is that not how other Muslims use philosophy? They don't they necessarily believe the premise in of itself, but they just use the arguments from it to present it to these people and say, well, listen, this is what you're doing on the on the premise of logic. Uh, what Ibrahim is Salaam the premise of logic? logic? Well, it depends what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying, Akhi. If the philosopher <laughs> said, I don't accept the premise of logic you're using, you have to prove to me this premise first. Exactly, but obviously there's... How are you going to prep? Obviously there's regularities and, and patterns within the universe that there's things, obviously, like the law of non-contradiction contradiction and all this stuff. Yeah, but they bring doubt. They, they prove to me that doesn't yeah. happen. That's my point. Safe, 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 as you say, we say with Deen. Safe. Because, you know, uh, yeah. you want, the day, <laughs> you say, safe, uh, yeah. safe, you have to remember what we're talking about. Philosophy is a marat, it's a disease. Mm -hmm. Philosophers, like we accept, they, they don't believe that already yet. Mm -hmm. And now when you accept their method, their method is based upon trying to prove everything. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you tell them, let us, based upon our argument on these premises, they're going to say, prove these premises is the premises itself. Mm -hmm. So a Muslim, what he does, I'm just going to entertain that and he start proving and he start playing or he says no, this is not by necessity then I say no, you are like I am that's why the Asha'ira and the Maturidis they say it's open al-balir another first you should not just blind follow you understand? but believe in Allah you know blind following you are following the fitrah and the aql is salim you understand? so that take us back, you proving my point okay, let's demonstrate to us safe you're speaking to a philosopher, uh, atheist philosophers, yeah? What is the premise that you're going to agree with? What is the, the starting point? I'm no expert in philosophy. Akhi, you, you watch Mohammed Hijab's videos. He's speaking to some guys for two hours, Akhi. The guy's bringing doubt. He's refuting it. Bringing another doubt. He's refuting it. There is none. Some people, maybe, they have married, yes? And if you speak to him, but you don't, you can show them the contradiction of this philosophy. But I'm saying, Akhi, don't entertain it for a long time yeah. and don't try to defend Islam. I'm not defending Islam. When I show, like for example, I'm not defending Islam when I told the guy, give me the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing him the stupidity of his claim. Mm -hmm. The foolishness for him to wake up. So, yeah. Understand? Mm -hmm. The foundation. But he could, you remember this guy, Alhamdulillah, you can see, Mala guide him. He woke up straight away. But if it's another philosopher, maybe if it's a philosopher who has disease, he can bring another argument against you. He said, yeah, about this and that, you understand, Akhi? Mm -hmm. And you have to entertain that. No, yeah, simple. You know, you understand, remember that brother, yeah. remember that, brother that he was talking to that said he didn't know if he was there? They said he didn't know. Yeah. The brother that he said he didn't know that was there. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Yeah, I, like I, I had talked to him and he had, had broken down the premise already. Yeah. He came to you two years later asking me the exact same questions. Yeah. Well, I spoke to Sabur for th three hours. He spoke to Muhammad Hijab for two hours. Sabur, the Asian guy. Asian guy spoke to him for three hours. He spoke to Muhammad Hijab for two hours, yeah? But to be honest, majority of brothers speak to him. And it happened to me in the past, Akhi. I'm not going to tell you how it never happened to me. It happened to me in the past. When I speak to some atheists, I entertain the argument. I go for hours. And I leave them without giving a reminder about their judgment. But that's not the Quranic teaching. The Quranic teaching is Allah said. Prophet Muhammad said. The companion said. Barakallahu alaykum. You accept? You accept you're going to be the Jahannam, Akhi? Because I've heard other YouTubers, they say, I use um, uh, arguments outside the Quran to prove the Quran and things like that. Yeah. I mean, the Quran, there's arguments. Yeah. 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 Yeah.